Good morning, good night. We're doing a couple of things today. One, we are changing the transmission fluid on the manual transmission of Aura. Two, we're putting on a little bit of clutch heat wrap. And three, I don't know, we're drinking a couple of these. All right, stick around. Let's figure out how this gets done. You might be trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing in this video, but the Evora owner's manual and service manual says you should actually change the transmission fluid while it's warm. They say actually take the car out for a run so that if there's any sediment, it'll drain out with it. Well, this car has been up on jack stands because it took me all day to get it up last time, so I had to run the car in place. So just looking at what we got here. So I had in my basement, in stock, <laughs> A little bit of this Redline Heavy Shockproof. We're not going to use that. That is a bit too much. Might use that in like a diff application. Um, I also had some MT90, and I was very tempted to use this. I just changed this out in my Mazda Speed 3. Had a little, a couple of extra bottles of that. But, no, we got the right stuff. And the reason why we didn't go with the, um, the MT90, it's not quite the right weight oil. Um, so... Took a little extra, waited and got the MTL. Um, make sure, whatever the hell you're dealing with, make sure it's GL4. Don't mess around with any non-GL4 stuff. This was GL4, because uh, otherwise it'll corrode the copper in your in your synchros. So make sure you get a GL4. That's why I waited for that to come in, because it is an SAE 7580, which is uh, exactly what is required. Um, and this one is a 7090, so we're not using that. So those two will go back on the shelf for the next project. And we use this. It should take just about three quarts. Um, I've got four here, so we should have well over enough. All right, so let's try and get our bearings under, under, the, uh, under the car a little bit here. I mean, basically, all right, you got your exhaust dead center. That's the rear of the car. That's where the exhaust goes out. This is the front of the transaxle, and so up there, that's the front of the engine. Down there, that's the back of the engine, or the back of the car. And a couple of things I want to point out to you here. One, this way over here, U.S. driver's side, it says, got a little warning, funky little warning that says, read your owner's manual, or something like that. That is your transmission fluid fill. Down here, all the way, you know, follow that down to the middle. Um, all the way down here at the lowest point, get my finger out of there, that is your drain. And don't be confused by something. These other here, these are just sort of like, I don't know, they are not fill, they're just a access uh, areas or something for the transmission. So. Don't, don't try and start undoing that. All right, so I'm under here. I've got a good look at everything. I'm gonna start giving things a go. By the way, it takes a 24. All right, nice. Broke it and then it just hand comes out. Now, hopefully nothing drops out of here. Yeah, okay, good, we're clean. I'll break it with the breaker. Why it's here. There it is. By the way, <laughs> the exhaust is warm. Crucially, not hot. Because I am pumping it and it is it is warm but not hot. So try and do this in one fell swoop. Alright, we're gonna get this up. We're gonna be smart. Very smart. The shorter the distance, the less mess. Right. Oh God. Unless you spill the whole thing. In this case. I'm going to try to do the quick pull. There it is. Perfect. Lovely. Lovely. No mess at all. It honestly doesn't look that bad. Like I said, not the best. Not the worst I've ever seen. And we'll just let it drain out. No rush here two washers here on each of these plugs um, you are certainly welcome to replace them in fact good practice to do so 
Uh, I wouldn't go more than one or two changes on these uh, without... You can't... You can reuse Let me put it like this. You can reuse them. It's good practice to replace them. Cheers. Lion's Head. Pennsylvania's most mediocre beer. All right. It's been about... 10 minutes now and we are just down to the absolute last drops but let's do it once this drips out we'll go on to replacement so as i mentioned the manual transmission takes about 2.3 liters or you know just under three quarts uh, if you're doing the automatic that's a whole different story but there it is for you the service interval is particularly interesting here. I mean, it's somewhere between four years under normal use or like f six months, uh, 4,500 miles, if you're uh, driving more aggressively or maybe tracking at occasional track use. But that's pretty frequent. I've had about two beers, and this is still dripping out at this pace. So we are done with this. I'm not waiting here for all night. Um, we're going to plug it up and make sure you got your... Your washer there, your plug washer. There you go, boom. There we go. Lovely. And it really doesn't have to be crazy tight. In fact, we don't want to go too tight with that. So I am using a hand pump on this, and that, ha that just screws on. All right, let's get this over here and do not spill this stuff. It's nasty. I mean, it smells nasty. All right, let's see. We're getting, we're going up, up and in. All right, we're in. There you go. I should be able to see that going through now. There's a slight pinkish color with it, and we're just gonna go. It's just gonna take a little while. It's three quarts. That need to go in there. Basically, you know you'll be done when it starts coming out the top. Certainly looks like it's coming out. I think we hit it. Let's uh, go ahead and cap it off. This stuff smells too, so try not to get it all over you. So now we just torque it. No, just torque this back on. Doesn't take much. Alright. Okay. And we're good. After a little bit more research, uh, I've decided that Lion's Head is, despite whether it's served cold or even straight from the fridge or freezer, uh, it really just tastes like warm beer all the time. That's a unique characteristic, which really means that it pairs excellently with working on a uh, British exotic uh, sports car. So, warm beer, British car, perfect match. <laughs> Cheers. Lotus issued a service bulletin because apparently your clutch fluid can boil. The routing of the uh, clutch line goes right next to the exhaust and if it you know under heavy use uh, it can get too hot and boil your clutch line which means your clutch goes to the floor uh, and then you can't shift gear so that's no bueno we don't want that um, so when we look at this which is the picture that's included in the service bulletin um, basically they're saying there's an area of the clutch line that you want to put some additional heat wrap on and they're outlining it here in yellow um, what confused me is I got under my car and my 2011 Evora looks different than this the clutch line is ever so slightly different um, the damper bracket they're calling out looks different on mine but ultimately it's the same clutch line that feeds the slave cylinder so that is the same position so let's find out where this is on the car same orientation that we were working on the transmission fluid. I'm on my back looking up at the sky. Uh, this is the front of the access panel. Um, and the, you know the front of the car is at the top of your screen. Um, so looking straight up, you can see the black uh, metal line. Uh, that's your clutch line. And then the slave cylinder is sort of a, a brown uh, to the left of it. If you're still struggling to find it, um, you can ask someone to 
uh, operate the clutch and activate this slave cylinder. Uh, my lovely wife helped me out, so I'll have to pay her well. While we're under here, we're going to wrap this clutch line. And the clutch line essentially is kind of hook shaped, so it, if I can gesture to you, starts down here, goes up, and hooks over the top. There's a service bulletin that Lotus put out where they want that to be covered essentially with a heat wrap. And I bought exactly what they've suggested, but it's pretty lame. Um, it's this kind of like, it's like a tinfoil wrap. I mean, it's actually, I mean, the, the material itself seems fine, but it's, I don't know. They said it's eight inches, and it's like, come on, man. If that's eight inches, I'm a freaking legend, okay? So regardless, uh, and it's like this, I thought it was going to be like sort of a Velcro. No, it's this sort of one-time adhesive. So I'm going to give this a shot. And my strategy is to try and not do it on the hook. Like, it needs to end up on the hook part. But I'm going to do it on the flat area down here first. I'm going to get it all pasted together. And then I'm going to slide it up over the hook. So I've put it on the straight portion. And then I'm going to peel off the adhesive. And then I'm going to slide I'm going to slide all of it up over, over the hook area, which is close to the exhaust. But now I'm going to slide the whole assembly up over the hook, and the hook is kind of like this. So here I am, I'm trying to get you some access and try and get you a view of this after I put it on. Um, and if I'm honest with you, I'm not, like it was easy enough to do, I just, I'm not impressed with it at all. Um, it's too short and it just looks like it didn't even wrap well. And then I got this video where I really shoved my phone up there and I see, wow, I didn't even, I wasn't able to get it all the way down over the part of the hook. There's some exposed uh, clutch and that is the hottest area. That's really this part we're trying to protect right up against the exhaust. So. I was fairly unsatisfied with that. And so I'm pretty sure that if Lotus was making a hand glove, they would say, simplify and add lightness. That's what my old Colin Chapman always used to say. So we're going to simplify the glove and add lightness only on the index finger. Well, that's what Lotus has done here. They've gone extra simple and extra light. Can I try that? Yeah, you can try. Go ahead, put that on your finger. And uh, I don't think it's all that, all that good. I think sometimes you need a full coverage. <laughs> good job. So I decided rather than button everything up, I was going to get some of this Cool It um, aluminized wrap. And I threw that aluminized wrap on, and that comes in a three-foot section, which is lovely, and it's got a Velcro. So you just kind of put it on and Velcro it, and if you don't like the way it looks, you can rip it off and do it again. And I admit that it's sort of designed for a slightly larger diameter, so it looks a little chunky and flunky, but it definitely covers it. And I actually put that over on top of the Lotus, uh, the Lotus wrap. So, And if you notice there, I got it all the way to the slave cylinder, Boom, perfect, right to the edge. Really satisfied with that. That's double coverage, double bagged, if you will, uh, in that area. So I'm sure that's great. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. I mean, if you own an Evora S1, please subscribe. You're gonna get nothing but uh, ownership experiences. If you're considering buying an Evora S1, you should absolutely subscribe. This is everything you need to know. So anyway, stay tuned. Thank you very much. Cheers.